Let me make this abundantly clear as I do every time I speak. This has nothing to do with hating Judaism or hating Jews. This has nothing to do with religion. This is about a group of European settlers who stole somebody else's land and who refused to give it back, who scattered the people whose land it was, who now number in their millions into misery, endless misery, and we demand their legal and moral right to return to their country be implemented, and we'll go on fighting for that until the last breath of our lives. Balfour, on behalf of one people, promised a second people the land of a third people. Even by the standards of imperial audacity, it was a remarkable thing to do, to give away land which was not yours to a small group of people who incidentally were, to a man, atheists. They were not claiming any biblical title to this land then. Absurd though that would be, as if God were an estate agent, ready to kick out people who had lived for millennia on a piece of land, so that others who had lived in Europe for millennia could return to it at their expense. Each of these Zionist leaders to whom Balfour promised this land was an atheist who was ready, by the way, to make their state, their European colonial state, anywhere, and was discussing, negotiating, to do just that in the Seychelles, in Uganda, in Patagonia, anywhere would do because it was a European colonial project, just exactly like that which had occurred in South Africa or Rhodesia, Zimbabwe or many other places. This promise given by the British Empire was redeemed in the course of the next decades and reached its apex in the catastrophe of 19. 48, 61 years ago, this catastrophe which has wiped Palestine from the map and scattered many of you and millions of others to the four corners of the earth. But that was not the end of it. Since that catastrophe, disaster after disaster has been visited upon the Palestinian people because they refused to accept the Nakba. They refused to go into the museum of X nations. They refused to be reduced to a museum exhibit where their clothes and their culture could be seen behind glass as a civilization, as a people which had given up the will or the ability to live. And it's because of that resistance, which has never died, that so many have spent so much in blood and treasure to try to destroy this effervescent determination of the Palestinian people to return to their country and to return their country to the map. And that's, I suppose, why I have spent definitely the best years of my life and most of my life in this campaign. In 1982, I was trapped in Beirut when the Israeli invasion, not the first, not the last, 
swept all the way to an Arab capital, Beirut, and began to systematically reduce it to rubble and ash. I mention that because I was a witness to the first use by Israel of white phosphorus gas. You saw that little girl speak so eloquently of the smell of gas everywhere in her home, on her clothes, on her toys. That little girl was describing the smell of the phosphorus gas which Israel used for the first time in 1982. And I saw it. I saw the children in the hospitals breathing white smoke from their noses and their mouths because the phosphorus gas was cooking them from the inside. That's what this weapon does. It bakes the victim to death and is irreversible once ingested. And I mentioned that because we saw that happen again on live television over that 22-day aggression from the 27th of December. Imagine a state calling itself the Jewish state dropping gas on civilians trapped with nowhere to run, nowhere to hide, no choice to be a refugee again because those doing the bombing had taken the precaution of locking the doors before the bombing began. Because whatever the devastation caused by Israel, 1,400 killed in 22 days, thousands maimed, hundreds amputated, scores double amputated, dozens triple amputated, hundreds orphaned. MashaAllah, more Palestinians were born in that 22 days than Israel managed to kill. So the problem is not the Israeli bombardment. That's what I'm here to tell you. 61,200 houses destroyed. Never mind. Thousands killed, maimed, orphaned. Never mind. We can face that, say the Palestinians in Gaza. Just lift. And why are they being besieged? Because they voted in a democratic election in a way which London and Washington and Tel Aviv doesn't like. And they're being held hostage to cry surrender or we'll go on starving you to death. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm not ready to collaborate by silence or inactivity in such a crime. That's why I told this little girl who asked where the Arabs were, where the Muslims were, who asked why we had left her alone. I told her that I was coming to the United States of America and I would return to her at the head of a convoy of hundreds of American flags on American vehicles with millions of American dollars to come to her aid. It is a duty, a wajib, to raise your hand against injustice. If you can't raise your hand, to raise your voice against injustice. And if you can't raise your voice, to feel that injustice in your heart. That's the law that we follow most of all. That's the law I hope you'll be with us in prosecuting on the 4th of July from the United States of America. Wassalamu alaikum. Thank you very much.